Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're going to have a lot of math fun because we're going to be dealing with an algebra word problem. So I know that uh, gives a lot of you out there a great deal of joy and excitement. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the problem. The problem is uh, the sum of Ted's age and Don's age is 39. Don's age is three less than twice Ted's age. And what we want to do is find their ages. And as I indicated, this is an algebra word problem. Now, you don't absolutely have to use algebra to figure this problem out. You can kind of just try to reason through it and experiment around with different age combinations till you get this right. But the whole intent of this problem is to actually use algebra to solve this you know, or answer the question, what is the uh, age of Ted and Don? So if you think you can figure this out, and I have a lot of, uh, you know, confidence in you, please don't give up. Don't look at this and be like, oh, this is too hard. Go in and give it a try, all right? See what you come up with. But if you can uh, figure it out, go ahead and put your answer uh, answers into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer here in just one second. Then I'm going to walk through the solution of this lovely algebra word problem step by step. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go and take a look at the answer here. Again, we're looking for the age of Ted and Don. So if you did this correctly, you would have gotten the following results. Ted is 14 years old and Don is 25 years old. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, hopefully you got this right. Matter of fact, if you got this right, that is super impressive. Let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A++, like 125%. Multiple stars, you can tell your friends and family that indeed you are an expert when it comes to algebra word problems. They'll be like overjoyed and so impressed with that information. You know, who knows? Maybe they'll take you out to dinner for free. But listen, great job. Now, some of you out there do not like uh, algebra word problems or math word problems in general, right? So when you see a word problem, you know, a lot of students are like, oh, word problem. I hate word problems. Just give me the easy problems. I don't mind doing those. But when I have like a word problem, you know, that's like mean, you know, why do I have to do this? Well, listen, the whole idea behind algebra word problems is really an application of what you're learning, right? So when you learn math, okay, whether it be algebra, or whatever, uh, you know, you're learning, you want to solve actual real world type of problems, right? And these come in the form of word problems. So word problems are just uh, kind of an illustration of the type of problems you can solve when you have the math skills to solve, you know, the underlying math skills, you know, that you need to solve for a particular problem. So if you don't like word problems, but you're like, I'm trying to get better at them, the first thing you want to do is to kind of change your attitude about word problems. Be like, okay, Mr. Math teacher, I'm going to be, you know, uh, happy about it, but I need help with it, right? So let's just quickly, real world fast, talk about the things you need to learn how to be successful with word problems. And I'm going to jump into this word problem here in a second. The first thing you need is the skills, right? So if you are, you know, in an algebra course, you need to have mastered the skills that your teacher is teaching you, right? Before you take on word problems. So if you can't do a word problem, oftentimes it's because you haven't learned the underlying skills. Now, the second thing you need is a kind of general plan to tackle a word problem. I'll go over uh, that here in a second but you need to have some sort of strategy, okay? Now, there isn't any one precise, exact way to do every single word problem, but there is some general guidelines that will really, really help you out. And the last thing you need to do is you have to practice, okay? Just like if you want to get strong, build muscle, what do you have to do? You gotta go to the gym every day, work out, eat right, and over time, you're going to get stronger. It's no different when it comes to mathematics. You gotta practice, practice, practice. And in the beginning, you're gonna struggle, but over time, you will get stronger, okay? So you're not gonna get instantaneously you know, better at word problems, especially if you've been away from math or if you're not doing much math. Now, real quick, um, by the way, I've done additional videos on my YouTube channel on word problems, because this is a really big 
part of mathematics. But let's just quickly, quickly run through some uh, key steps uh, to solve a, an algebra word problem or a math word problem in general. So the first thing I'm going to uh, tell you is that you need to read the problem at least three times. Just don't read the problem one time and start doing stuff. Read the problem, reread it, really assimilate kind of what's going on. Okay, So at least three times, that it's, that's kind of at a minimum. Now, the second thing is you want to try to model that information. Uh, and I'm going to suggest do it graphically. Come up with a sketch. You know, and this is where you can kind of be creative. There's all different sorts of way, ways you can model the information in the problem. But try to come up with some sort of graphical way to uh, organize the information that you're seeing. Because this will oftentimes help you see, uh, you know, the way to get uh to um, solve the problem, right? So you're like, okay, how can I solve this? Well, if you model things, you know, that will really help you see solutions, okay? So that's the second thing you wanna be thinking about. The next thing is you're gonna to have to select uh, a variable or variables because we are talking about algebra and these would be your unknown values, okay? Now, because you have these variables, the next thing you wanna to try to do is build yourself some algebraic equations and then you want to solve that respective equation or equations and once you um, have solved for this particular variable you want to go back and make sure that you answer the actual question in the problem okay so just because you solve the equation um, sometimes you have to take an additional step to get the right answer but these are the general guidelines that you want to take to solve any algebra word problem okay so with all that being said let's go ahead and get into the actual problem here Okay, so again, we have uh, Ted and Don, and we know that the sum, okay, i.e. if we add their ages up, it's going to be 39, and then we know that Don's age is, now anytime you see is uh, in a verbal uh, sentence, in terms of mathematics, it's always the equal sign. So Don's age is or is equal to three less than twice Ted's age. Now this could be kind of confusing for a lot of people, but what we're doing right here is uh, translating a verbal phrase, and we need to translate it into an algebraic expression, okay, or a variable expression. And this is the stuff that you learn in basic algebra, like pre-algebra, algebra one. So if you never got that skill down, you're gonna struggle here, okay? So I'm, um, I'm gonna uh, really strongly uh, encourage you to identify what skills you're weak in so you can work on those, so you can, you know, obviously improve. That's the whole idea of me doing these videos. So I'm gonna leave links to my algebra courses in the description as well. Uh, you know, this stuff is taught in pre-algebra, algebra one, and even in algebra two. Okay, so with all this being, all this information, the objective is we wanna find their respective ages. Okay, so let's go ahead and start thinking about this, come up with some sort of model. And I kinda like to use stick figures, but you can use any other kind of way to help you you know, organize the information. So we know that Ted and Don, their ages, their combined ages is 39, right? The sum of their ages, uh, the sum of Ted's age, Don age is 39. And then here, we know that Don's age is, or is equal to, all right? So I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna be like, all right, Don, Don's age is equal to, or is, is equal to what? Well, three less than twice Ted's age. So what's twice Ted's age? I'm just gonna put it two times T, whatever Ted's age here is, and this would be three less. So this is Don's age is three less than twice Ted's age. So this kind of helps me kind of model, you know, uh, what's going on. So I'm taking um, the verbal, you know, uh, uh, word problem, and I'm kind of like organizing in a way graphically so I can kind of clearly, you know, see what's going on so I can see the relationships between their ages. Okay, so now we're going to want to start selecting some variables. So I'm thinking about this relationship, Don's age and Ted's age, but I'm going to have to select a variable here and let it be equal to either Don's age or Ted's age. Okay, so here in this case, I'm gonna let X equal uh, to Ted's age. You could select a variable for Don's age, but I'm just gonna say, okay, I'm just gonna let X equals Ted's age. All right, fine. So the variable X is equal to whatever uh, Ted uh, Ted's age is. So Don's age, okay, right here is what? Well, it's gonna be three less than twice Ted's age. 
And if Ted's age, we're saying is going to be the variable X, so Don's age is going to be what? 2X minus 3. Okay, so now I have two expression, uh, two expressions or two variable expressions for both Ted's age and Don's age. And now we can actually um, think about how can we form an equation to solve for uh, their respective ages, in this case, the variable X. Because if I get X, um, I will have solved for Ted's age. And then here, to get Don's age, all I have to do is whatever X is equal to, just multiply by 2, subtract from th uh, 3 away from it, and I'll be good to go. So we're going to use this fact that Ted's age and Don's age is 39. But in this case, instead of uh, T plus D, we know that Ted's age is going to be X, right? It's the same thing as X, plus Don's age is what? 2X minus 3, and the sum of their ages is 39. So now I have myself a lovely algebraic equation. Let me kind of just scroll down here so we can focus on this. And this brings us to another skill set, right, which is solving linear equations. So if you're like, well, if you can't translate, well, let's suppose you can translate uh, uh, verbal expressions into algebraic expressions, but you get to this point in the problem and now you have difficulty. Well, then this is, you know, obviously something you want to improve, which is solving equations. So let's go ahead and do this now. So we have x and 2x. We want to combine like terms. That's going to be 3x minus 3. So now we're going to go ahead and add 3 to both sides of the equation. So I'm going to have 3x is equal to 39 plus 3, which is 42. So to solve for x, all I need to do is divide both sides of the equation by 3. So 42 divided by 3 is 14. So x is equal to 14. And what does that mean? Well, remember, we established up here that x was Ted's age. So Ted's, and that we should be more precise, Ted's age in years, right? So x is uh, equal to 14, or Ted is actually 14 years old. Okay, awesome. So now let's go ahead and get Don's age. And this is pretty easy now because we know that Don's age is three less than twice Ted's age and X represented Ted's age. And now we know that Ted is 14. So I'm just going to plug in a 14 for X. So it's going to be two times 14, which of course is 28 minus three, which is 25. So Don is 25. Okay. So on the scale of difficulty in terms of you know, uh, algebra word problems, you know, maybe like a first year algebra course, uh, maybe give this uh, problem a, uh, well, I don't know, like a five out of a 10. There's certainly much more challenging word problems and there's a lot easier word problems, right? So this is kind of a, a medium level. If you like salsa, you know, you got mild, regular, and then spicy <laughs> level, right? You want to, the one thing you don't want to do is kind of go right to those advanced problems because then, you know, you're, you're going to probably struggle. So if you're looking to build any scale up, you know, start from the basics. That's why your teacher, when they give you like homework, they give you a lot of basic problems and then like medium problems. And the last problems they give you is typically one or two word problems. But you need to know how to do word problems to be successful in mathematics. And, you know, it's a big part of algebra. So again, if you need help on any of this stuff, uh, I'm going to encourage you to get some, you know, direct full instruction because oftentimes little tutorials are not enough, okay? But uh, if this little video helped you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.